Right, hi boys. Um, what I'm doing for you today is... So for those who are unclear about how to use Simpson's rule, um, whichever way you choose, we're going to... I'm going to show you three different ways to do the same question and show that they all do give the same answer. Um, so there are three ways we're going to do it uh, with the table, um, with two applications, and with one application. Now again, they all give the same answer. Um, having spoken to Mr. Thompson, he's told me that given um, some data from the HSC markers, apparently boys who do, um, who do this method with two applications typically get the question right more often. So the way I showed you was one application. Um, that's me. Um, the way that Mr. Hannon showed you was with the table, but apparently Mr. what Mr. Thompson has suggested, showing it with two applications, doing two applications of the formula, actually uh, typically results in a more in, in students making fewer errors. But as I said, if you do all if you do any one of them correctly, you're correct. So let's have a look now. All the questions we'll be doing here apply to this are related to this one question here. So let's read it. Uh, the cross-sectional area of a river channel is shown below. The depth of the river uh, in metres was taken every 30 metres and is shown in the diagram. Well, straight away we know whichever method, method we're going to use, our height is going to be 30 because that is the difference there. Now the good thing is we don't have to find our function values. These are our function values. So we have those five function values there, 5, 15, 18, 16, and 2, and our height is 30. So let's go see what we would do. All right, method one is using the table. Okay, so we, we've, we're not going to bother putting in our x value in the table because we, know we don't need our x values. This is not a function. This is, um, if you'd like, because it's an applied question, we just need our y values. And those y values, whereas we went down 5... 15, 18, 16, and 2. Now, of course, you need the weight and you need the product. Okay. Well, our weight is 1, 4, 2, 4, 1. So our product is 5. 15, 4 is a 60. 36, uh, 64, and 2. Now our total there becomes 167. Okay, then our area is approximately equal to h over 3 times the total, which is the height. We said that was 30, so it's 30 over 3 multiplied by 167, which is 10 times 167, which is approximately 1670 meters squared. Okay, so that's using the table, if that's the way that works for you. And the same applies for the trig, for a trig function as well, except with a trig function, we would start with an x value here, and then we would need to find the y values, of course, using those y values or function values. All right, look at um, doing two applications. Well, the two applications formula is this area is approximately equal to h over 3, our first plus 4 times the middle, 4 times the middle, plus the last. Now, if we do it that way, if this is our riverbed here, something like that, what it means we'll do if we've got our function values that look something like that, and ignore the fact that they're not evenly spread, what it means we do two applications, so we use those one for the first application, and we use those ones for the second. So we're going to do it as area one and area two. So area 1 will be um, our h over 3, still 30 over 3, because our height is 30 no matter what. Outside of our first, which was 5, plus 15 times 4, uh, plus 18, which ends up being, again, 10 multiplied by uh, 83, which is 830. Uh, our second application ends up being, well, A2 is 30 over 3. Outside of, I'll just have to bring this down the line. Uh, now, the, this value here becomes our first one, and that's our last one, and that's our middle. 
Uh, so it ends up being our first function value is 18 plus 4 times 16 plus 2. And that ends up being 10 multiplied by 84, which is 840. Now if you add those two together, you'll get 1670, which is just the sum of those two. So essentially what you're doing is you're saying, well, I'm going to find the first area, and I'm going to find the second area, and add them together. Um, as I said, as um, Mr. Thompson has told me that according to some HSC data, students who do it this way typically get it right more often. doesn't mean it's a more right method, it just perhaps leads to fewer uh, unforced errors. Uh, the method that I showed you in the third way that is the method that I showed you in class, which is again our area is approximately equal to h over 3 outside of the first function value plus 4 times the odd plus 2 times the even plus the last. Now, um, let's see, our h is still 30. Our first function value is 5 this time. Uh, plus, now my odd ones are 15 and 16. So again, I knock off the, the first and the last ones, and that makes 15 and 16 the odd, plus 2 times 18 plus 2. And that ends up being, you know, it's 10. If I put all that in my calculator, I end up with 10 times 167, which looks very similar to using the table, uh, which is 1670 metres squared. So, boys, same answer, three different ways. It's whatever works for you. I'm not going to dictate what you use, but um, please know that any one of them will work. It's just whatever works best for you. Hope this has helped.